Without further ado, let us say hello to the diamond, El Diamante, beloved, and it says a lot about him that he would show up just a couple of days removed from UFC 269. He's kind enough to join us right now. There he is. Dustin, how are you, my man? Good. How you doing, brother? <clears throat> we don't have the famous uh, setup with us here. Is that just a Miami thing? Is that a Florida thing? The mic? What? What? Oh, yeah. No, I didn't. Un I haven't unpacked my bags, man. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. You gave me some crap for not telling you about the audio, so I was ready to tell you if the audio was good. The Wi-Fi is good. The audio I would never. <laughs> I would never come on the revamp show with another hot mic. I wouldn't do that. Okay. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, a lot of people don't usually show up uh, after a loss. I know this one was a tough one, so it says a lot about you. Could you just tell us just, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, how are you doing just a few days removed from UFC 269? Physically, I'm, I'm fine, man. Um, emotionally and, and, you know, I, I've been better. I've been better, but that's life. Uh, as far you know, you've had highs and lows, and I think that's why people love you so much because you have overcome a lot. Does this one hurt the most? It's it's tough to say, man. I don't know. <clears throat> they all suck. Losing sucks, especially title fights. And when everything felt good, had a great camp, great weight cut. Just under. I mean, losing always sucks, but I feel like maybe underperforming. Um, hurts worse than, than a loss. You feel like you didn't live up to your potential on Saturday. Oh my God. No. Yeah. Not even close. What bothers you the most about your performance? I'm, I'm not sure. The second round, um, wait, waiting to get us trying to get a stand up instead of maybe attacking my jujitsu and trying to create space thinking, you know, Going into this fight, I thought that if I was put in a bad position, I was going to hold it out and and take over in the later rounds. <clears throat> was my was my mindset, and um, obviously Herb wasn't going to stand us up, and I just held on, kept holding on. Should have created space. Maybe I would, you know, I, I don't know. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, so there's a lot of right. stuff I can say and look back on, and I'm not sure, but I'm just so much better than that, you know. And everybody says that when they lose, but I know I am. Um, just sucks, man, because it's it's one of those things like maybe never get the opportunity again uh, to call myself world champion and and to underperform. You know, I owed it to myself. This wasn't this one. This one was for me. It wasn't for the money. It wasn't for for proving anything. It was for me. You know, and fucking fumbled, man. It hurts. Do you believe that in your heart that you'll never get an opportunity again? I, I kind of do, yeah. See, I disagree. I actually think there's a very good chance you get an opportunity again. I mean, you can kind of see the roadmap right there, especially if Gaethje wins. Uh, you have a win over Gaethje. You win a fight. Like you know what I mean? I, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to... I don't know if I'm going to make that cut again. I might never fight at 155 pounds again. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the future. Okay. Is it, be, is, it, is it getting tough at this stage of your life? That cut. Oh, dude, I, I, I could have cut a few more pounds. I could have came in at 152 on this, this fight. My cut went so smooth. I felt great. Uh, of course, that's because I did all the things I was supposed to do in training camp. Um, it made the cut so great. But I don't know if I want to go through that kind of training camp again to where I'm hungry every day and sure. com com competing in the gym and pushing myself on, on low calories. We'll see. I, I don't know. Right. I don't know what's going to happen. Have you watched the fight? No. I don't, I don't want to right now. You'll take some time. Do you think you'll ever watch it? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm going to see it. Okay. But just I feel so disgusted with myself. I don't, I don't want to feel any... Uh, if I watch it, it's just going to make me feel worse. I know it. Do you remember the first round? Did you feel like you were close to finishing him in the first round? No, I had him hurt a, a few times. Um, his recovery was great. But... I knew we had four more rounds of that, you know, uh, or I thought at least when I sat on the stool, I thought we had four more rounds of that. So I thought I was going to eventually um, catch him, put him away, keep breaking him down, keep landing shots, but that didn't happen. Yeah. I, I was just wondering in your mind, like, are you talking to yourself in that moment saying, if I do, you know, X, Y, and Z, I'm about to become champion. Are you even having internal conversations? 
Yeah, yeah. I sat on the stool between the first and the second and thought to myself, I'm going to be the world champion tonight. Well, yeah. I remember my corner giving me water, telling me that all my straight shots are landing. Uh, you can't miss with your left hand. And I, I just thought to myself, I'm going to be the world champion tonight. Do you remember what you thought between the second and the third? <clears throat> not really. I, uh, not really. I think I was... Uh, I think we might have been talking about staying off the fence, to try to keep it in the middle of the octagon, maybe. But mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly what was going through my mind. Technically, in that third round, what, what do you remember about what you could have done differently or what do you wish you would have done differently? Honestly, <clears throat> honestly, my, uh, my shoulders were a little bit fatigued. I don't get tired. I, I never feel that. But my shoulders are a little bit fatigued. For, but that's also something I don't do is hold another man for five minutes mm. waiting for a stand-up or, or, or thinking to myself, we have... I usually need to go for the finish, you know, and try to create space and scrambles. I do good in, in action. Um, so holding him like that and him posturing up the whole time kind of burned my shoulders out. I remember starting the round saying, wow, my shoulders are a little fatigued. I think that slowed me down a little bit. I threw a lazy hook or overhand that I remember I need to go back and watch. And he might have level changed on my legs or grabbed my body under a hook. I was probably a little bit slower than normal. Uh, I, I don't know, but he got to my back quick. Uh, I, I felt, and maybe this was me just reading into it, like even when you tapped, there was like a delay there where like you were, I felt like you were almost talking to yourself in that moment as well, where you didn't want to, but you had no choice. Of course. Of course I didn't want to. Yeah. And, uh, I'm tough and I could have gone to sleep and showed everybody how tough I am, but yeah. that doesn't get me anywhere. That no. just, uh, you know, um, I've been doing it long enough to when you know, checkmate, you know, yeah. um, he tucked his hand. I, I pulled his hand down a few times. When he tucked it behind my head, his, his, at first it was kind of a neck crank and, uh, it's a, uh, it's a worse position that I wanted to be, you know, I, there was not a worse position I could have been in with a guy like this. Right. You know, all the weeks of training camp of, of, of so many hours of, of preparing with guys on my back, trying to choke me. And I just knew that, you know, it was tough, man. Was he tougher than you thought he would be? More durable. Not not crazy strong, not crazy fast, more durable. He's a champion. Mm. How in that moment, you're you're obviously upset, you just lost. <clears throat> and like we we're we're privy to a conversation. You didn't know that they were gonna catch this. You're telling him, you know, you want to donate twenty thousand dollars to his town. Like in that moment, no one would blame you if you're pissed off, you're whatever. Like, why do you think of that in that moment to the guy who just beat you? Why, why, why does that happen? How does that happen? I'm not sure. I think it was just a, sp a spur of the moment thing. He was talk He came talk to me and I just decided to tell him there in my head. The, the, the perfect plan was to uh, win and then go into his locker room after and let him know that I was I was going to donate the money. Um, that's right. I mean, that's how I envisioned it. Yeah. Going to sleep fight week. Um. It was just the heat of the moment. I, I was going to tell him in his locker room, but he came talk to me and we were speaking. So that's, I just told him there. Why is that an important thing for you to do? I, it just hit me fight week. I, I saw some videos of him showing where he comes from. And I thought, you know, a donation from, from the good fight would go up far there in Sao Paulo. And that's just what we do, man. Try to make people smile and uh, carry that stuff on my back into fights and, I lost, but we can still, you know, find good in that and give people a reason to smile and cheer. And, and that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to do, Ariel. The cause for this particular fight, there's always like a cause for the Good Fight Foundation. Um, can you tell the people what it was and have, like, is, have you met your, your goal or is that still in play? <clears throat> that's still in play. The, actually, the crowdfunding page for the Second Harvest Food Bank, I think, raised... A little bit of money, nothing crazy, but we will be auctioning off. We're, we're going to post a link soon with my fight kit. We'll see what that you know goes for, and then the foundation will cover the rest to, to bridge the gap between the whatever we raise and what we set out to raise. We set out to raise seventy five thousand for Second Harvest Food Bank, which was going to provide uh, three hundred thousand meals for Louisiana. So that's goals. Anything I set, I, I guarantee any goal we set if we don't raise enough money i'm going to cover it and the foundation is going to cover it it's going to get met one way or another we've never missed a goal so whatever we raise from the sell the fight kit we're going to hit this goal and, and provide the meals mm. so for a second harvest food bank 
Can I ask you, um, and, and I, I hope you take this the right way because it's an absolute compliment. How did you learn to handle these moments so well? I remember the Korean zombie press conference. In fact, I remember being in Fairfax um, working for Fuel TV and you came to talk to me in the back and you were very emotional afterwards. You can hardly speak. You probably don't remember, but it's one of those moments because not a lot of people come to talk to you in those moments after you know a, a bitter defeat. Obviously, we remember Habib, you showed up. We remember Saturday, you show up. You handled these moments so well. How did you learn to do that? I, guess, I mean, it sucks to say maybe I learned to do it by losing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe by going through it. I'm, I'm able to reflect. You know, I don't like do things and try to put them away and not address them. I'm able to reflect on mistakes that I make in fighting and in life and it sucks, but that's just how it goes. The real thing I, that, that sucks for me, man, uh, I'm trying not to get emotional, but uh, I, want, I really wanted, my daughter was there for this one. I really wanted to win and dedicate this uh, world championship to my daughter and to show her that it hurts, man. I understand. Uh, uh, we obviously see how close you are with her and how much you love being her dad. And it's great to see her there. Was that her first time at one of your fights live? Yeah, yeah. Wow. What did she say about the experience? <sighs> she made me feel good uh, yesterday, actually. So she had a great time. My, my manager lives there, and uh, he has a, a daughter the same age. They know each other. We went on a snow trip a while back together. So she got to be reunited with her friend and she got to see Las Vegas. She calls it meatball Las Vegas. She got to go to meatball Las Vegas. <laughs> and, and, uh, she got to see the pyramid luck store. She thought it was a real pyramid. Yes. <laughs> uh, she had a blast. You know, she's a kid. Yeah. She had a blast. How old is she now? And it was, she's five. Okay. And it was amazing to have her there. You know, she got to come to the weigh ins and, and she told me she saw the guy with cotton candy hair and just, she had a great time. Right. You know, but I really wanted to become the world champion and tell her she can do anything. She sets her heart out. You know, that was uh, important to me. Yeah. I, I still feel like that message remains. Um, and uh, I'm sure that she recognizes that as well. And it was really cool to see her there with Amanda Nunes's uh, daughter and also Juliana Pena's daughter. It was like this nice little congregation of young girls at the fight. Your yeah, wife that's was after weigh-ins, that's when I walked down the stairs and all the kids were like hugging and, and yeah. hanging out. I'm like, what the hell has cage fighting turned into? Right. I remember back like 14 years ago when I first started fighting, I would have never thought we'd have kids hanging out, high-fiving and everything smooth sailing. It used to be such a war zone, you know, in it's my crazy. mind, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great to see parents competing, moms and dads. Um, by the way, uh, you, you, you've been active on on Twitter the last few days and on social media um, and that's interesting in its own right. And I think people respect that because sometimes people will disappear. What, what has prompted you to do that? Uh, to, you know, to, to write what a beautiful journey, the ups and downs, I'm grateful for all of it. And you've written a couple of times about a few things. I, you know, I, I feel the support <clears throat> and I know people are watching the journey and people have been for a long time. A lot of it's been documented. I've been doing this a long time at the highest level. So they got to see the ups and downs and I felt the support coming into this one. And uh, I'm just giving, you know, all that is Twitter and Instagram. The real posts are just a snapshot of, of my mindset, how I'm really feeling. So that's just, you know, I'm just letting people know how I feel. Uh, and did anyone reach out to you that really meant a lot? Did anyone say anything to you after this that, that really stuck with you? I mean, obviously, other than there's been, there's been a lot of great messages. Uh, You know, I, I don't know if I can pick one, but there's been a lot of people who, who show me a lot of love and I appreciate it for sure. It is, you know, you said earlier about like, I don't know about 155 and all that. I'm sure in the moment right now, because it's so fresh, just the idea of like having to climb the mountain and all that, that's something you don't want to think about. It feels daunting at the moment, right? Yeah, that's kind of the what nudged me over the edge to go to 55 when I was at 45. I was mm. close to a title shot and I lost to Connor in 2014. And I knew I would have to make that cut three, four five more times, whatever it would be to get another title shot. And I just didn't have it in me to, to, to do it. And here I am at 55 and I'm thinking like, well, if I got to fight three times, two, three more times to get a title shot, I don't know if I want to lift those training camps on, on low calories, pushing my body like that. I'd rather, I'd rather just do it and have fun mm. because I, I love, because I love what I'm doing, you know, uh, make it as enjoyable as possible 
instead of sacrificing and hurting every day in camp because I'm low on calories, you know, I, I don't, I'm not that big, probably like this last camp. I think I was 181 starting camp mm. <clears throat> nine weeks before the fight, 182 starting camp nine weeks before the fight. But in my body, just the older I get, I don't know if I'm getting denser. It's just harder to cut weight. It comes off less and less. Um, and I just want to have fun with this and fight because I want to, mm. you know, uh, 165. I, I, honestly, honestly, like think, yeah, it would be great, but I, I don't know what, when I'm going to fight, if I'm going to, I don't know what's going to happen, man. I'm just in a weird spot right now, honestly with myself and I'm okay. And I'm okay to speak about it because you know, it, it just, it is what it is. Is there any part of you that feels like you may never fight again? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I, I would hate, I would hate to never fight again off of a loss, you know, that, that would, that would suck for me. You can't definitively say, yes, I will fight again or that, you know, like, I mean, I'm most likely, I most likely will fight again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm certain this is, I mean, this is, I'm not, I'm not retired. I'm, I'm going to, yeah. I'm, I'm not retired, but I just, this is part of the process. Figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Can you compare how you feel a few days removed from this to how you felt after the Habib fight? Is it the exact same emotions? No, this, these are a little bit different for some reason. These are a little bit different. Cause the Khabib fight, I felt like, uh, I was, I was bested, you know, like I, I did everything I could and I, and I lost this one. I feel like I didn't, I, I could have, I could have done more mm. and that, that hurts. That's something I have to, you know, deal with. Mm -hmm. um, I could have been smarter. I could have been more in the moment. Could have been more locked in. And uh, I could have been the world champion. Could have. Could have. If coach would have put me in <laughs> back in high school, I, I could have thrown the football over those mountains, man. Well, why do you mean, what do you mean by locked in and in the moment? You seem pretty damn locked in. I don't know. Just didn't, something, something felt off. Really? Saturday yeah. or all week? Yeah. No, no, I felt, I felt locked in all week. Saturday didn't feel locked in. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Nervous? No, no more than normal. I mean, I'm always, it's, you're, you're about to fight. You yeah. know, I'm always uh, uncomfortable, but ready for the, for that, that feeling. I, I don't know. I'm just so much better than that. Can I ask, uh, you, you said a great line, 25 to eternity, which was a great line. When I heard you say it, I was worried if you were putting too much pressure on yourself, eternity is a big word. In retrospect, you feel like you put too much pressure on yourself to get that so that you can have the moment and be a champion for life, immortalize all that stuff. I mean, the, I put the right amount of pressure. It's true. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that loss is uh, for eternity. Every fight, and whether it's 15 minutes, 25 minutes, they're all, you never get those, you know, those, the damage you take, the blood you spill, you never, you never get that back. No matter how big or small. So we'll round third here. Um, what do you do now? You're just taking time off, relax, rest up, Getting right? fat, dude. <laughs> I, I haven't even thought about going back to the gym or going for a jog. I've just been drinking beer and eating cookies. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. You know, if I'm... Be if a man's being honest, dude, I don't know what I'm doing, honestly. I'm just... I don't know. Because you, you, I mean, the last year has been all about this, right? The last 10 weeks have been all about this. And now you sort of feel like, okay, what, what is the, the plan here? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there an idea? Is there someone out there that maybe will get you excited a little bit when you start to think about good thoughts? Oh man, this is the guy that will get me back on the horse. Do you even allow yourself to think of that? Or is it too, way too. Like far? when I've been laying down thinking about fights, yeah. like nobody gets me, nothing gets me excited. Uh, unless Nate Diaz wants to fight. If he wants to fight, that gets me excited. But all these other guys, like even the new guys and whoever it is, uh, maybe a name to Will whenever I hear it, but nothing. No. But there is that guy, that Stockton guy, who's 
you know, been in your orbit, but you guys have never fought, of course. That's the one, right? 170? That would be great. That would be great. Feels like it makes sense at this juncture. Yeah. I don't know what, what their plans are with the UFC. I know leading up to my fight, I was seeing a lot of contractual stuff. They were, I guess. Yeah. Arguing and, and whatnot. I don't know, man. Yeah, he hasn't re-signed. He still has that one fight left. They offered him Hamzat. Obviously, that's not of interest, so they'll extend him. But uh, I know they're interested in the Connor fight, but that was obviously before you, you know, you fought Charles. So now things change a little bit. Yeah, and I don't, I don't even have a time frame. Sure, sure. I'm like I said, like I said, I'm healthy, and uh, if if I do a fight again, or I just want to be excited, man, excited mm -hmm. to fight. Any king cake? No, nah, that's Mardi Gras time, dude. We don't eat king cake on. Oh, uh, damn! For Christmas, I didn't know that. I didn't. Couple know more months. Oh wow! Is there a Christmas? Is there like a Louisiana Christmas cake? I mean, a lot of pecan pie, but I guess that's everywhere. Oh, nice! I like that. That is tremendous stuff. I'm sure you're getting a lot yeah, of love around town. Making a gumbo for Christmas. Family's gonna come over. Uh, just kick back and relax. Yeah, for sure, man. People should have the love's incredible, but it doesn't. <clears throat> I know that people are supporting it and, and I appreciate it, but it's, it's me, you know, it's me versus me right, right now. Right. And, and how are you spending the days? My little, yesterday, my little brother came over today. Uh, I'm building a house. So I went to the house a couple of times to finalize some stuff and went to the grocery store, man, drank with some beer, <laughs> ate some cookies. I, I don't know. Uh, just, that's it. Just been drinking beer, really, and and thinking about stuff. Well, you know, I think the reason why people are so um, emotionally invested in your journey is because you're one of the few guys that we were introduced very early on. And if anyone watched that Fightful documentary, I think they'll always be attached to you. And I remember the house that you lived in back then. And I remember how you grew up. And I see the stuff that you post on social media about this new house that you're building. And I see your family, and I see your wife, and I see your daughter... You're, you're a rich man. You're a champion. Please don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone ever, ever convince you otherwise, man. It doesn't matter what happened on Saturday. So I, I know you know that. You don't need me or anyone to tell you that, but you're a legend of the sport. You'll always be beloved. You have done more and been more courageous than 99% of the people on this planet. So I have eternal respect for you and uh, can't say enough good things about you. You do a lot for your community and for the sport of MMA and, you know, Sometimes it doesn't go your way, but you've had a hell of a lot more nights where it went your way as opposed to the ones that didn't. So please take pride in that, Dustin. It's always great to talk to you. It's always great to have you on. I'm going to leave you alone now and stop peppering you with questions, but it, it means a lot that you would come on. And especially you were our first guest to end the year with you is pretty damn cool as well. So thanks, man. I appreciate it. And, and congrats on a great fight and a great year. Fighter, I mean, you're in the, in the mix for fighter of the year despite the loss. So you, you had a tremendous run in 2021 and- 2022 will be even better. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You're the man, Ariel. All right. Cool. Thanks, Dustin. All the best to you. Happy holidays to you and your family as well. Thanks, brother. Yours, yours as well. Thank you. There he is. El Diamante, Dustin Poirier.